What urban legend persists between Postbridge and Two Bridges in the UK? Have you ever found yourself inexplicably losing control of your vehicle? What if it wasn't you and there was a supernatural force at play? Today, we test the believability of the hairy hands of Dartmoor. Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the most unusual and tell you whether or not we find it believable. This is bonkers. <laughs> There's no better word to say than bonkers. I guess I use my British accent in this one. You do. We're the in the Aric UK. Ends of what, Dartmoor? Dartmoor. 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 Don't know why there's an F there, but yeah. <laughs> this is... um. I don't know. Like sometimes I feel like when when there's like a chance for a sillier topic, I feel like you lean into those. Okay. And uh, I feel like I'm stealing a topic from you. Really? It's I'm excited. Like, it's I've not, never heard of this at all. It's not U.S. based, and it's a little silly. So okay. I, I feel like this is kind of like your. My t- <laughs> this is my realm. Yeah, I I have, I've never heard of this. I, I, where is Dartmoor? Dartmoor. Where, where is it? Dartmoor is in Devon. Okay. It, it's Great Britain. So the yes, UK, United Devon. Kingdom. Uh, This comes out while I'm in Scotland. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, so I'm going to be north of there. Yeah, listen, I know this is going to sound crazy, but it is a legitimate urban legend. And uh, there's a good handful Uh, 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 of uh, encounters from 100 years ago until, I would say, recently. Recently. Um, Sources up top, we are southdevon.com. Unexplained.ie. I don't even know how they got the the .ie. .ie, that's Iceland. Dot more dot gov, I think. And dark tales. Dot gov. Dot gov. We got a dot gov in here. Yeah. Is that US government? It can't be. It could be. It could be us talking about it. Okay. All right. But maybe not. I don't know. But they got the gov, so they're good. We got a IE, a gov, a dot com. Lots of different sources for such an intriguing urban legend. Let's get into it. Okay. All right. So I need you to <laughs> Close your eyes and imagine with me here. They're right? closed. They're closed. You're in the UK. All right. You you had some tea. Maybe you're drinking tea. Right. I don't know. Oh, tr- I'm waving to the king. You're on the left side of the road. <laughs> the <laughs> wrong side of the road. Is They drive on the left, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we drive on the right. We drive on the right. So they, they drive, drive on, on the left. left. Yeah. I'm gonna, close uh, your eyes. I'm going to be on it. Okay. All right. Closing. You're driving. You're on this nice scenic road. It's dark out, but that's okay. Maybe there's a little bit of moonlight. You got your window down. You know, you're relaxing. It's nice. Maybe you're listening to some Ed Sheeran. He's UK, Uh right? He is. Yeah. And uh, maybe Adele. I don't know. And as you're you're driving out of nowhere, you suddenly start to feel the steering wheel shift. Mm, It's moving. It's jerking. You're like, this is weird. My hands. I'm driving with my eyes closed, but my hands are, they're very stable. (laughs) And then you look and you see there's a second pair of hands on your steering wheel. Oh, no. Sometimes the hands are invisible. Wait, are they my wife's? Unseen, no. Okay. Other times they are claimed to be disembodied hands that are incredibly strong and incredibly hairy. Knuckles hairy, fingers hairy, big old hairy hands. They overpower you and they swerve your car and you find yourself off the side of the road and then nothing good. You blow up? No, you just crash. Oh, okay. Or you get thrown from your your bike. It, Jeez. It's bonkers. But what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to tell you yeah. is these are disembodied hands that come out of nowhere and they mess with your steering wheel or your, your bike handles. Why? I assume you'll tell me why. I, I wouldn't assume that you. Oh. I would tell you why. Do you really think an urban legend that talks about hands coming out? And grabbing your steering wheel with no body is going to have a Y. I was hoping there might be one. Well, that's because you're human and you look for the Y. And I <laughs> do too. And, and I'm, I'm just telling you, don't. I'm trying to not to set you up for disappointment. Okay. All but right. But I do have some interesting encounters. Okay. I would love to take some encounters. Yeah. I yeah. want to know where Devin is. Go ahead. Look it up. I actually looked up this exact patch, by the way. Of, it's a, it's a the... particular patch of road. Okay. Well, you know what? While you're looking it up, I'll just tell you this. Okay. So it, this, like, 1910 is the first encounter with this thing. 
It's been known to affect cyclists and drivers and motorcyclists between post bridge and two bridges. And like I said, many victims report that their vehicle jolts, it swerves violently, it's steered off the side of the road as if some other thing is grabbing the wheel and shaking it. Some people see it, some people don't. But to get to what you're looking up, where does this take place? The majority of it takes place between post bridge and two bridges on their road, which is B3212, the B52. <laughs> I don't, do they, is that how the they B52? say it? The B52? You know, it's B3212, but that's probably not how they say it. Do you think they say the thousands? Like, I'm on B3212. I, I don't know. I feel like the B, th- I think they would say B3. B3212. I don't know. It, it's a road in the UK and it goes from Post Bridge, which is a, a location. I don't think Post Bridge is technically in Dartmoor, but Post Bridge and then Two Bridges, which Where's I, two I believe is in Dartmoor. I actually, I Google mapped it. It's about eight minutes. It's about an eight minute drive from Post Bridge to Two Bridges. And it's in that, in that single eight minute span of road is where the majority of these things happen. It's not particularly winding, but uh, there's like no lighting. It's rural-ish. For when I first read it, I thought it was a legitimate bridge, but no, it's called Two Bridges. Apparently, there's a two-bridge hotel. Oh, yeah, I see it. I see the... I, I pulled it up. I see the hotel. Yeah, apparently, people go to the hotel. It's nice. It's it's right by the Dartmoor National Park in Devon, so it's nice. It's a nice area. Pretty fancy. Yeah. I, there was a travel video because I want to make sure I was saying Devon right. <laughs> Not Devon. Devon, or I don't know. <laughs> I, um, it's in Wales, so I think you say in Welsh, be like, Der- Dervin. Dervin. Oh, okay. <laughs> But again, eight minute road, ruralish, uh, not too much lighting, and uh, right by this national park. Also, something we'll get to a little bit later. This park in this area is known for granite. Like, there's a lot of granite, like cool. just big chunks of granite, just waiting for you to turn into a, a kitchen top countertop. <laughs> That's probably the main supplier yeah. of countertops in the world from here. Maybe not. I don't know. But that said, let's move on to some encounters. So the first encounter takes place June 1910. 1910. 1910. Okay. So it's uh, 113 years ago. Wow. Now, this is, if you look up any article, any book, this is always going to be, in my opinion, the first encounter that you stumble upon for this story. I think it is attributed to it. How do I want to say this? I don't think it can be a perfectly attributed to the phenomenon, and you'll find out why, but I could see how it starts it. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So it's June 1910, and there's a medical officer named Dr. E.H. Helby. Okay. And he was working at the nearby Dartmoor prison. Not at this point in time. I mean, technically, yes, at this point in time. But at this point in time, he's not working there. He's driving. He's driving on B3212, and he's with his children. Okay. His children in the sidecar of his motorcycle. Dumb question. Why don't they name the roads... I feel like you would know this. I don't know this. I don't know this. I have no idea. I feel like, well, it's like we call it like Highway 71 or 77 or Route 90. Like I think that they just do B3212. I don't know. Okay. that's it's a, It doesn't roll off the tongue. No, it doesn't. It's a lot of numbers. I, this, it's like algebra. It's going to sound nationalist. I hate when we ship a shirt somewhere and they're, they're like, their zip code is like a bunch of different letters and stuff. <laughs> it makes me American mad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like what's wrong with just five digits? Why you got to throw A's and W's and Z's and numbers and like, just, I really don't care, but you know, I'll be honest though. I have to do way more research sometimes where it's like, Oh, you're shipping this. And there's like, there's the Providence and then, then this, and then, then this It's like, there's like when you got a city state Providence, you got a Providence, Canada, Canada. Okay. But even like great Britain, like sometimes it'll be like the city and then not Providence, but what is it? It's like the, there's like, it's like two. There's like the city, like it's the UK, but the yeah. country, but then there's also like the town they're in, but like, what would you, is it a, I don't know. They don't have states. Well, you don't ship our merch. So you no, don't. I don't. I don't. It's, uh, it's, y- y'all don't care about this. <laughs> Let's get back to Dr. Helby. Okay. So he's driving on his motorcycle with his children in the sidecar okay. as they would do in 1910 or as you would see in Indiana Jones or Harry Potter or Harry Potter in the sixth one or is the seventh? seventh seventh yeah and unfortunately he lost control of the motorcycle oh, geez he was struggling struggling and he pleaded for his children to jump out of the motorcycle as it was driving for their own safety and it was claimed before they jumped off the children looked up at their dad, pleading with them to jump off, and they saw 
what they described as him struggling with an unseen entity. And they jumped off, and they were fine. And, and you know, they're, they're confused. They're probably a little shocked. They probably don't know exactly what they saw, but that's what they claimed, that they saw him struggling. Unfortunately, he got thrown off the motorcycle and he died instantly. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it's tragic. He died. The kids lost their father due to this instance. And what I would say the reason why I like this is considered the first hairy hands of Dartmoor encounter, but he didn't live to tell the tale. Right. So it's basically going off what his young children saw. Yeah. And what happens next. Mm -hmm. Like this is the chain because the next encounter also takes place in 1910. So I think. If this was the only encounter ever, I don't think this urban legend would exist. Right. Like, this story doesn't have enough to carry on this legend, Mm -hmm. but because it starts a trend of these similar accidents, people attribute it to being the beginning. It's really intense, though. It is. I mean, it's it's, when you're driving and you're texting or you're you're listening to your music or a podcast and you got the window down, you're really not always thinking – that you're in like a 2,000 pound metal death trap. That's true. Yeah. Unless like, you're in a Hyundai, then it's not metal, but <laughs> it's just plastic garbage. But no, I, no, but you're right though. It's it's this giant thing. I doubt always say it's like driving a weapon. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, that's a good point. It's just because you just don't think about it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm very acutely aware of it because yesterday, as I was telling you, because we did trivia yesterday, we got dinner together, families. There was a three car rear ending right behind me. Like, yeah. my car was the first car not to get hit. That's really close. It was like, and it's not like a bang, like a gun crash or a, a gunshot. And it was like yeah. bang. And, and I looked in my rear view mirror and I saw two cars behind me hit. And then the car behind me got hit. And I just like let go of the gas <laughs> with, the, with the brake so I could slide forward a little bit. Yeah. I'm just like, uh, no. <laughs> not it. <laughs> no. It's like it ends here. And thankfully, because it's just, you know, I got a kid in the back. It's like, ooh. got dinner to get to. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it's, and this is nothing new with anything. But you get hit by that car and it's like. Your next like two weeks change, mm-hmm. like rental, yeah, uh, mechanical insurance, insurance, proving who did what, yeah. what you have, may, hoping that the people that hit you have insurance. Like, it would just like completely affect and alter your next three days because somebody yeah. on their phone. That's my guess because mm-hmm. there's no way that they didn't see him stop. Again, neither here nor there, but that's because he died and he couldn't say what he was doing. Like, was he struggling? You know, like what what was he doing? What was he seeing? Because he passed away, we'll never know. So I don't think it can perfectly be like this is the start of this urban legend. I think it's just based on a timeline. That's why it is. And and to give him some credit, the children did claim that they saw. And that would be, I mean, that's what a terrifying last image of your father. Like seeming like he, and what does that even mean? Does that mean he only had one hand on the, I mean, he's a motorcycle. Like, yeah, what are his hands doing? I don't know. Like it's, it's creepy. It's creepy. So let's move on to the second encounter, which takes place same year, 1910. It's August 1910. So a couple months later, there was another incident. It was a dull, foggy day on August 26th when a British army captain who was known to be a very experienced rider. I assume that means they often saw him riding motorcycles. Maybe he was popping wheelies. I don't know. He was also thrown from his motorcycle. Um, So was the motorcycle invented before the car? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Because when was the car invented? I don't know. You can look it up if you want. People I want are, to. Yeah. Yeah. 1885 and 86. Motorcycle and the car. Motorcycle and then car. Yep. But both in the 1800s. Yeah. People getting around. People got places to be. I guess Ford perfected it, though, in the 20s. <laughs> then what happened? Then here we are. <laughs> but anyways, he was known as an experienced rider, thrown from his motorcycle. But thankfully, he didn't, he didn't die. He did go to the hospital. He had to receive care. And with him being a high standing individual, an army captain, people were a little bit confused what happened, you know, like it doesn't seem like the type of person that would lose focus or lose control of his bike. So people were actually curious what happened. So here's something he was quoted as saying, quote, it was not my fault. Believe it or not, something drove me off the road. A pair of hairy hands closed over mine. I felt them as plainly as ever I felt anything in my life. Large, muscular, hairy hands. I fought them for all I was worth, but they were too strong for me. They forced the machine into the turf at the edge of the road, and I knew no more till I came to myself, lying a few feet away on my face on the turf. 
unquote. I have a question. Why don't people just stop? I think, to be honest, I think the fight or flight sense kicks in. Like, I don't think you're. I don't think you're thinking rationally in this moment. Mm. Like, I don't think you're like, oh, ah, oh no, those hands are grabbing my wheel. I better, I better break just to be sure. You mm. know, I think it's like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if people's feet tense and they actually went faster mm. because you don't. But I think I like. Especially like with a car, it's a little different. We haven't yeah. got to a car story. I feel like a car is so much more stable that you could, you know. I think I, you need to also with a, grab the brake on the bike. I don't know. With I feel like with a motorcycle, I mean, if you get any type of movement, I, I've never driven one, but I have rode a bike <laughs> and I've been hit by a car on a bike. Oh, yeah. But uh, I feel like any type of movement, like if there's something stronger, if this is an army general or uh, army captain. Yeah. And this, <laughs> if there's an army captain. And he's saying this thing is way stronger than him. Yeah. Imagine the force his bike. And not yeah. only that, but you're like, you're using your force to push against it. You don't yeah. know. Which, you can't see it really. You see the hands, but you don't know which way it's going to jerk. Reminds me of ghosts. And it's like that scene with the pottery and ghosts. It's like my love where he's doing. The, have you never seen ghosts? Never seen ghosts. You've only seen it because your wife's. No, podcast. no, I've seen it before that. I don't know if I believe you. I've seen ghosts. And I've seen ghosts. I've seen ghosts because one of my favorite scenes from the, is from that movie where he's like, flip the penny. But he puts his hands on his wife's hands while do, when she's doing the pottery. Does he have big, beefy, hairy hands? No, he has um, Kevin Bacon hands. Oh, that's probably nice. Yeah. I think if I was driving a motorcycle and somebody stronger than myself was moving the wheel or the, yeah. the handlebars, I absolutely would crash. Absolutely would crash. Like, I have bad balance anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's amazing. I mean, he I guess he did. He got thrown off. But but maybe they do break because they're getting thrown off. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. It's very silly, and I kind of – I let off the top how I think it's very crazy. But it's like most things that we talk about on the podcast. If you really break it down and you put yourself in the situation, it is terrifying. Like, this is yeah. – if this happened to me, I would be very freaked out and probably dead. Oh, yeah. I'd write an op-ed to New York Times about how we need to address this dilemma of hairy hands. I would immediately, before, like, in the, in the hospital, I'd be like, give me my laptop. I need to write this on Reddit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Quickly, yeah. before I forget every detail. All right, let's move a little later to summer of 1924. Hey, what's up, Bizarros? You all want to go on a skinwalker hunt with us? Okay, just kidding. Well, kind of. Let me ask you, are you familiar with the mysterious ranch in Utah known famously as Skinwalker Ranch? Okay, y'all know that history is not my thing, but let me break this down real quick for those of you that don't know. About 20 years ago, Dr. Keller and veteran journalist George Knapp literally started a paranormal phenomenon with their groundbreaking investigation of this ranch, which included cattle mutilations, UFO sightings, and strange, unidentifiable creatures. All of it was documented in the book, Hunt for the Skinwalker. Now, the authors have partnered with the iconic comic book publisher, Boom Studios, to celebrate this milestone 20th anniversary. The outcome is a Kickstarter for an amazing graphic novel inspired by the incredible true story of their paranormal investigation. Boom Studios even got the writer from X-Men Unlimited, to help construct the story and visualize many of the mysterious incidents for the very first time. If you love all things unknown and unusual and want to own a piece of paranormal history, this graphic novel's for you. But you gotta act fast. Order reserves end June 6th, which is coming up, and they're only making 375 copies. That's it. So go to boomstud, B-O-O-M-S-T-U-D dot I-O, forward slash skinwalker and not only will you get the brand new graphic novel you also get a declassified hardcover edition of the original hunt for the skinwalker again that's boomstud.io forward slash skinwalker and reserve your copy of the graphic novel hunt for the skinwalker today So in the summer of 1924, there was another encounter with these strange, hairy hands. There was a popular, widely respected scholar of folklore in Devon, Theo Brown. And uh, just just like a ufologist, the only way you can become a scholar of, of weird and, 
and and you know get respected is by writing a bunch of books. I thought you were gonna say or writing an album called Folklore and be Taylor Swift. <laughs> no, although I think she earned it. But anyways, she's written multiple books: Dartmoor Legend of Mrs. Child, The Black Dog in English Folklore, Devon Ghosts, and mm. more. Oh, okay. Is this one in the Devon's Ghosts? Devon Ghosts? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't okay. read it. <laughs> uh, it's not meant for me. I'm not from Devon. But she was camping in a trailer with her husband about half a mile from that that eight-minute stretch of road where all these encounters took place. So something she wrote about, it doesn't say where. So she did write this encounter, but I, I can't – I don't want to tell you the book. Someone buy the book and it's not in the book. I don't know what book it's in. She did write this experience down. Okay. Here's one of her quotes. Quote, I knew there was some power – very seriously menacing near us, and I must act very swiftly. As I looked up to the little window at the end of the caravan, I saw something moving, and as I stared, I saw it was the fingers and palm of a very large hand with many hairs on the joints and the back of it, clawing up and up to the top of the window, which was a little open. I knew it wished to do harm to my husband sleeping below. I knew that the owner of this hand hated us and wished harm, and I knew it was no ordinary hand, and that no blow or shot would have made any power over it. Almost unconsciously, I made the sign of the cross, and I prayed very much that we might be kept safe. At once, the hand slowly sank down out of sight, and I knew the danger was gone. I did say a thankful prayer and fell at once into a peaceful sleep. We stayed in that spot for several weeks, but I never felt the evil influence again near the caravan. But I did not feel happy in some places and would not for anything have walked alone on the moor at night or on the tour above our caravan. Unquote. Ooh. So this is like a, the, 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 maybe the same thing, but a little different. But this is the first time anyone has described these hands leaving the path of road because this is about a mile, half a mile let me see. I think I said half a mile. Half a mile. So this is a half a mile. It's like close enough where you'd be like, yeah, this could be the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like imagine they're not floating hands. Like let's say it's, uh, you know, a creature. If someone saw it, like it's known to be on Bunny Man Bridge. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody's a half a mile away from Bunny Man Bridge and they see this large bunny suit creature, you know. Yeah, like, you can assume. You'd assume it's the same thing. So like. Yeah. That's really creepy. Yeah. I don't like that story. Like, what would it have done, though? Like, would it have strangled? Like, Kill, Yeah, strangled him. Uh, that's the only thing it could but do. But that's the scary thing. <laughs> Puts his fingers in his mouth. Like, uh, choke. I'm going to make him throw up. <laughs> Got dirty hands. Pokes in the eye. Po- picks his nose. Goes in his ears. Yeah. Lives, uh, what, Willie? No holes are safe. No. I Like, it's one of those, like, what could have happened that just leave you... Just like kind of have a shiver down your spine. It's like, I just really creep. I don't like how it's like described. It's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah, it's, it's like, what was the hand called from the Adams family? A thing. Is it the thing? Thing? I don't I think. Maybe thing. this thing. I don't know. But also, like, what does that mean for these crazy stories? You know what I mean? Like, like it is, cr- and we're not the done, we're not done yet. It's, but like, it's a very crazy story. Yeah. And, it's like why – like what does this have to do with this patch of road anyway? But then somebody a mile um, – half a mile away experiences the same phenomenon in a different way. It's strange. Yeah. Right? It's really weird. All right. I got an unknown time encounter. It came out in a book. It came out in Supernatural Dartmoor. Okay. All right. So that book was written by Michael Williams and the story involves a journalist called Rufus Endel. I don't know when this took place. Mm -hmm. It was told to Michael. I don't know if it was told. Oh, let me say this. Endel did not want this story out until he died. Oh, He's like, do not tell anyone this story until I die because he did not want the ridicule. Okay. He knows it sounds crazy. Okay. He did not want to be alive with this story tied to his name. That's very interesting. So the book came out in 2003, Mm -hmm. but I have no idea when... Rufus Endel would have told Michael the story. Who would have, if it was Rufus that told Michael or a family or a member family, told him? Yeah, like a kid or something. And, and what the time lapse between when he died versus when the book came out versus when he had this encounter. So okay. I, I don't, that that's the timeline that I have. And, and now that's the timeline that you have. Anyway, Endel claimed that he was driving near Post Bridge when a pair of hands gripped the steering wheel and he had to violently 
fight for control. Luckily, he was able to avoid crashing and regain control of the vehicle, and the hands seemed to completely vanish into thin air. That's it. That's it. That's it. He lived. He was able to break this thing. I wonder, was he going the other way as other places, other cars so far? Didn't say. I wonder if that's what it is, if he's just going the other way. But this is the first, this is a car. It is the first car. Yeah, at least the first reported car. I wonder if it'll set a precedent. I'm curious now. I think a very interesting detail about this, though, is vanish into thin air. Because if that's true, then we're not dealing with a normal, like, okay, there's nothing normal about this. It's like I'm trying to deduce this throughout each encounter. Like It's almost like each encounter brings a puzzle piece to 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 the pile. Spread yeah. out on your table. It reminds me of like if if Bigfoot was able to phase shift and only its hands decided to phase shift. We're going to be talking about that in probably about 15 minutes. Okay. But I think that is the detail. Because otherwise you're just assuming that there's these hands that are always present and just creeping around. Mm-hmm. But this story brings in that they vanished. I wonder if they're like... I guess they could have disappeared without... Like, to him, they vanished. I guess that doesn't mean, like, he saw them, you know, like, dissolve or whatever. Or he just hit the invisible wall for the hands, you know? Like, he can't go past that point. Maybe. I I do not know. Now let's get to an anonymous encounter. I'll give you the, the source, though. I got this story from wearesouthdevon.com. Okay, we are. We are. South Devon. South Devon. Um, so this Man. is an anonymous post. the North Devon. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so we're Southies. So here, here's the post, the anonymous post from this, this site. Quote, I live on the road that goes towards Princetown, but I've heard it happen to people elsewhere in Devon. My uncle was working for a builder's late on a site when he got held up and came home a different way and had to go down that same road. He was driving a small van and said it was very dark and first he felt like the van was being followed or... Someone was watching him and just felt really spooked anyway. Then he thinks he saw someone on the side of the road, but deep down he knew that no one was there. When he went further down the road, he felt his van get grabbed like by a force and he couldn't keep the steering wheel straight. So he's going to go to the side of the road. He's a builder and a big, strong man, not, not a weakling, and was trying to turn the wheel as hard as he could but there was no way. Then he felt something on the steering wheel and he looked down as his eyes were just on the road till then and he saw a large pair of hands covered in hair on the wheel grabbing it and pushing it the other way. His van went up on the verge and banged hard onto the grass more and almost wound up hitting a tree but stopped. Just then the hands disappeared but he was really scared and lucky Someone came up the road a few minutes later behind him and another car stopped to see if he was all right. And he was just up on the bank and had clearly come off the road. Thankfully, he was all right, but just in shock. My uncle still swears that this happened to him and he's not someone to admit weird things like this. This was 20 years ago, but he didn't know the story of the hairy hands until he was told about it later. Unquote. South Devon out. That's pretty, pretty weird. I, it's crazy how well it matches the other stories, considering he didn't know about the other stories. Assuming he didn't know, and assu- I mean, assuming, it's, it's like, as much as you can take from an anonymous post. Like, yeah, I think there's holes you can poke in a lot of the stories you've told so far. But once you start going into anonymous, you know, anonymous land, it's it's a grain of salt. It's yeah. it's it's a sand, it's a grain of sand. Uh, one sand. One sand. One sand. But still creepy and still, if true, terrifying because it's still a very large man that yeah. is strong. And, it, you know, if you're an uncle, you, you got strength. Yeah. Oh, I got un- – I'll never – well, I don't know if I no, – no, no, I'll never have an uncle. I'll never be an uncle. Yeah, you'll never – okay. You, but, you know, so well, I'll never get like that once you become strength. A, once you become an uncle, you get at least probably 10, 10 pounds of muscle. I think you, you get a couple stat increases in yeah. your in your character. But you also probably lose some hair. And intelligence points. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> but anyways, it's it really fits the mold. Yeah, it does. Again, they disappeared. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Where did these hands go? And they leave they leave flipping you off. Yeah, I was thinking you that got too. lucky this time. Well, it's funny because what's her face? The the lady before this. The lady. The uh, Theo. Theo. She said it wanted to hurt them. It, she felt, felt it, it menacing. Felt it. That's kind of scary. 
I feel like out of everyone, I don't think these are sensitive people. I think these are just people that, and by sensitive, I mean paranormal. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think these people, and maybe they are, maybe that's why these are the people that see it, but it feels more of like an external thing. Yeah. She seems like, because she's so into folklore and paranormal, I could, I could see her having more sensitivities. Mm-hmm. Like she's like, these people probably don't read about horror write folklore, read folklore. Like, I think these are just everyday people going to work or going home and they experience these things Mm -hmm. where she was like in it. Like she's writing books about folklore and stuff. Yeah. So I think she was probably more in tune with, with that type of thing where one of the people who was it, was it the second story, 1910, somebody, the British captain maybe Mm -hmm. was getting, he got a weird feeling, but so far most people are just kind of like, it just happens. Yeah. Where she, I think, and I could be wrong. I mean, just because you like things and write about things doesn't necessarily mean I, that you I don't know. It was, hers was just very scary because she put that menacing, I want to hurt you vibe on it. They should just route in their GPS like, quick turn up here on your right and <laughs> don't go down this road down here unless you want to be attacked by these hairy hands. The- All right, let's move into 2008. We got a January 2008 encounter. Wow. So Michael Anthony, was that the same name? Hold up. No, it was Michael Williams. Okay. I was like, whoa, I got cross-sourcing over here. So Michael Anthony was a supplier for a photocopying machine. Okay, cool. In Great Britain. And his work sent him to Postbridge. So on January 26th, he had a meeting with a potential client, which is irrelevant to the story. Um, but he killed it. Awesome. He got, he got that sale. That Good client was like, he, Michael, you could sell me anything. I'll, t- I'll take four of your photocopying machines. And he said, cha-ching. He's like, all right, sign here, dot here, and uh, don't buy a house because this is a bad time. <laughs> bad things are about to happen. Yeah. 2008. So good for him. I don't like sales. That's why I'm in marketing, though. But uh, anyway, after his meeting, he found himself on B3212. Oh, no. B3212. Late at night, he assumed around 11 p.m., and he was heading back to the city of Bristol. He said he barely left Postbridge. When his skin began to feel distinctly cold and clammy, followed by a deep sense of dread. Ooh. Now this confused Anthony because there was no legitimate cause for this dread. And and he was actively thinking this while it was happening. He's like, like this is a leisurely drive for him through a rural area after he just landed a sail. Like he knew what is happening. Like I just did a good thing. I'm excited. I made this sale. There's no pressure right now. There's no timing right now. Like, why am I feeling this? But even so, all this fear started overtaking his body and his senses. A few minutes later, a powerful, oppressive wave saturated the car. Literally said the car started feeling oppressive. It felt malevolent and his hands started going numb. It got to the point that he was really concerned that he might be suffering a stroke. Here's a quote. Anthony could only look on in both complete horror and disbelief as a very large pair of hair-covered hands, or paws, as he described them, encased his own, and then suddenly attempted to forcibly steer the car towards the edge of the road. To his credit, Anthony struggled valiantly with the wheel and on three occasions fought off the actions of this spectral, hairy intruder. Interestingly, After the third attempt, the hands simply vanished into thin air amid a brief flash of light. The shaken driver floored the accelerator and didn't stop until he reached one of the service stations on the M5 motorway. Unquote. Wow. Now this one is more like the caravan where he was feeling some stuff. Yeah, it was was menacing, wanting to hurt him, and he felt it. He thought he was going to have a stroke. Yeah, so it's like, I think it's interesting that, one, he had enough time, but two, how acutely aware he remembers feeling like, like, it wasn't like, I'm scared, and now I'm feeling scared. It's like, I'm having a good time. And it's like, before he could mentally, his body was discovering what was happening before he could mentally process. Yeah. Like, his body was reacting to a stimuli that he didn't even know existed right away. Yeah. Because he's like, I'm having a good time. I mean, I imagine it's like when you kill something, you got the window down, you're driving, you're like, ah, yeah. But then all of a sudden you just start feeling scared and your hands get clammy and you f- feel oppressed. It doesn't make sense though because you no shouldn't sense. feel that way. And then you see obviously these hands and they yeah. like went over his hands, which is just like, yeah. like not only is it grabbing the steering wheel, it's like trying to use oh. his hands 
What was that? I don't know. I'm not getting scared in the studio listening to this story. It <laughs> no, is not, 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 not going to happen. Not this one. Hell no. I don't know. It's just something had to happen there. Yeah. No, like, it was it was something out of this realm. This is the type, like, I'm just going to say it over and over again. This is the type of story I want to tear down. But, yeah. and I'm not saying it's true, and we haven't got to the end yet. So we, we decide that stuff in the discussion. But there is certain aspects of it that do hold some merit which is true which is crazy to me based on the premise of it just makes sense because it seems so outlandish yeah to say the least i prefer bonkers (laughs) so i got one last story for you i got one last encounter it's from our good friend reddit oh okay cool cool cool. so you know it's a good time but uh it's it's from it's from our friend sally okay so from our from our good friend sally um that's not not a it'd be a sophia if it was a sophia right yeah quote my name is Sally, and I experienced what I believe was the hairy hands in 2016. I'm from the USA, but I was visiting extended family in the area of Dartmoor. I knew nothing about the area or anything. I just got my passport and was excited to finally travel outside the country, which I'd never done in my 20 years before, not even to Canada. I had a great time with my family during my visit until one fateful night. If what I'm about to tell you didn't happen... It would have been an unremarkable evening that I would never think of again. It was just a basic, cool evening, and there wasn't much moonlight, so it was pretty dark. I was driving along, and I got this weird feeling in my stomach, just like something was wrong. I thought maybe I forgot something in my family's house. Maybe that was why I was feeling weird. But then quickly I was like, oh, well, if it's important enough, they can just ship it to me. I thought that would take care of the feeling, but it didn't. It actually grew worse. My hair started standing up on my neck. I didn't know why my body was reacting this way. But then I realized there was a heavy pressure against the back of my head and my neck. And then I realized my head wasn't leaning on the neck rest. I quickly jerked my head around, which alleviated the pressure, but I didn't see anything. This made me very slightly swerve the car as my attention shifted behind me. I quickly clasped the wheel, focused ahead, and shook my shoulders to try and shake the jitters. That's when I felt a very distinct feeling on my shoulder, a hand clasping it. Before I could look down, seemingly from nowhere but the shadows behind me, two large, hairy hands whipped around me and snagged onto the steering wheel. At the same time, it felt like my car started going faster. I panicked. First, I tried regaining control of the steering wheel. Then, I tried to pull back the hand as my car started swerving left and right. I don't know how I came to this conclusion, but I actually closed my eyes and I started reciting a small prayer that my mother taught me when I was a child. In hindsight, obviously closing my eyes was pretty dumb, but I felt like I had nothing to lose at this point. The hands were too powerful. Eventually, my car came to a halt. I peeked my eyes open and I was parked off the left side of the road. My chest was heaving in and out and my fight or flight senses were raging but I was alone. I never told my extended family about what happened. To be honest, I don't know how to tell the story without sounding crazy. I just feel lucky to still be alive. Unquote. It's interesting that it's responded to the prayers. Yeah, just right? Just like the um, other one. Yeah, who, um, one of the stories. What's her face? It was, oh, you're right. Yes, Theo. Theo yeah. Brown yeah. was uh, reciting a prayer. It's interesting. There's just little puzzle pieces, man. I know. And I hate puzzles because I'm colorblind. <laughs> you got to use the colors to pick out where to put the puzzle piece. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, I'd rather be doing anything else. I took a colorblind test today. How'd you do? I passed. Yeah. Did you take a dyslex- dyslexic test today? No. Yeah, I don't think I'd pass that. I know. Yeah. That's why That's why we're such a good team. <laughs> <laughs> that's why right there. Uh, but let's let's move on to some possible explanations. All right, some explanations for what this weird stuff is, right? The hands. The hands. The hands. They're just hands. Magnetic rocks. What? <laughs> yeah, so a well-known writer in the area, Beatrice. Beatrice? That's right. Beatrice. That's. Uh, I believe am you. Am I saying no? Is that how you would say the name, though? Beatrice? Beatrice. Oh, Beatrice. my God. Beatrice. <laughs> Beatrice. Oh, my God. There's a, there's a Beatrice in the game. Resident Evil 4? No. 2006. Uh, you had math class. You had, you had English class. You had 
ESPN class and the deluxe version. Oh, Bully. 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 That is Beatrice and Bully. I was about to say it. She was the girl of the nerds who were all taller than Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Beatrice had a theory as to why people were getting flung from the road. She had expressed that she drove to the road and saw a car ahead of her swerve for a moment. And she thought this was strange. And she she thought about this stretch of road. And, uh, And then she approached the skin marks on the road. And she mentioned that they were, quote, almost right angular and that she'd never seen such a thing. So she suggested that maybe these magnetic rocks, like this granite, all these rocks in the area, because it's this national park and all this stuff. Uh-huh. She's like, what if it's these uh, magnetic currents that are very powerful due to the season? And, and, uh, and the, you know, she was like, could be a connection with the metal found in motorized vehicles that were the targets. Um, and, and the metal could work as a conductor for the magnetic rocks. It was, it was dismissed pretty quickly. I said, I have so many holes to poke in that. But. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was pretty much, it was dismissed, but it's unique. Yeah. I think it's a cool. And, um, have you seen the movie old? Yeah. Yeah. I saw old. Yeah. You see like a little bit of like the idea of like surrounding this road with rocks. Like mm-hmm. I'm trying to go without spoiling, but you know, like, yeah, I could see that. I think I think M Night Shyamalan Lama Hey uh, read that Beatrice theory and was like, hmm, I have an idea. Here's an interesting one that I don't think I would have ever thought of if I didn't see someone else write about it. It was in one of the articles. I okay, thought. okay. The hairy hands was Doctor Helby, uh, the first guy. Yes. Okay. His spirit. So he didn't get harmed by the hands. He crashed and died, and now his spirit are the hands. Okay, what well, then? What happened to him? He hit a bump. I don't know. Like, then it, why would his kids say? Well, they could have been like four, five, and six. You know, like they could have looked back and saw him jerking, and it could have looked like he was fighting. If you take the kids' comment out, we don't. Like I said, we don't know. I was already skeptical that he was affected by the hands before I saw this. Like, I was just like, this is just timely. Like, the second encounter took place two months after this. So people, I feel like people were lumping it in there. Yeah. And it fits. Somebody flung off their motorcycle on this patch of road. You know what I mean? Oh, it does. It really does. So my – so the, I think the question for me is if it is Dr. Helby's spirit, one, is it vengeful and, and wanting revenge? Or two, is it like a loop where he is living out his past – and he's not trying to hurt these people. Yeah. But he is there. He sees the wheel and he's trying to save it and jerk it. So really he's hurting these people in real life. Well, you not, you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. affecting them in real life. Yeah. But he's living through a time loop of him trying to correct the wheel himself. That fits for all but the one. The caravan. Yeah. The caravan. You're right. That the you're right. But that could be hold on. That could be something else. The, what they, what she saw could be different than what. Yeah, it could be. It is a, ha- a lot could happen in half a mile. Well, it could be. This is England. Yeah, and in my head, the the the, the fae, the fae, the gnomes, the the little people. They are more. I don't want to say malicious, but they're more. I think more forward minded. Like people are more forward minded of them, and maybe it's that was a manifestation of something in the area. Oh, hey, at this point, if this is real, I'm open to Faye. I'm open to a lot of things. I don't think it's all of them. I think that's just the one occurrence. I like your idea of that. This is maybe a loop. Yeah. I I don't know. That's just, that's just one thing you hear, you know, when people walking through walls and stuff that they're just living and it just kind of like fits because that's how he died. When you, when you get into a car accident, you feel this, this fear, this dread Mm -hmm. come over you. That would explain what happened to that young man that made the sale. Yes, that's true. That's true. It's like he was feeling the death of Dr. Helby in that case. Yeah. And obviously Dr. Helby, even though he, like his death was traumatic, he was also probably thinking about his kids. So yeah. it's like he doesn't want them to die. So like, there was a big fear for that. Yeah. That was probably the only thing he was thinking about. So we can come back to that in the discussion. Another theory. So this is from Dr. Ellis Powell, who loves the paranormal, which is cool. Claimed that the hairy hands was a temporary, infrequent, or incomplete presence. So it's a spirit that just never fully actualized. And I guess they also claim that th- this entity was brought into the world through hateful thoughts and emotions. I don't know. Like a tulpa? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think 
I think they're saying it's brought by the thoughts, not that the thoughts created it. Oh, okay. So not quite like a tulpa, but I could see I could see your train of thought here. Then there's another idea from Ruth E. St. Ledger Gordon, who was the author of The Witchcraft and Folklore of Dart- Dartmoor. And she believed that the hands were a result of entities that were disembodied matter that existed somewhere in the unknown middle between the spiritual world and our own. Okay. And I would like to present a theory. Other than I really I really like the Dr. Helby, but I didn't think of that one. I, I wish like I wish too. I would have thought of that one. I like the, the time loop aspect of it. I didn't think of that one. But somebody kind of mentioned it being pause and they mentioned it being very hairy. And I think we've talked about it before and you kind of alluded it to it already. I said we we're gonna talk about it later. I think it's been longer than 15 minutes. But um we've talked about the idea of Bigfoot being interdimensional. Yeah, we have. What if this is but then it's like, why just the hands? Why but just the unless hands? It can, unless it can control that and only bring the hands into this dimension. It's very random. It's like Bigfoot has nothing better to do than transport his hands to a different dimension to mess yeah. with it. Like, I feel like the whole thing would be there. So I don't love it. But, you know, when you're, when you're talking about disembodied I, hands, you're reaching for straws. You are reaching. With your not disembodied hands. Grease, grasping for straws here. And that, that makes as much sense as some of the other theories. Yeah. So you're, this is going to be hard for you to believe, but there is a little bit of skepticism. No. Uh, mostly it's around the idea that it is a very poorly lit rural road by a national park. Like there's not – there's no headlights or there's no street lights, There's no lamps, things like that. Some people claim that because of all the granite and like the, the like the compiling it up, sometimes it can – it constricts the road because there's so much of it. So it uh-huh. makes it more narrow. Um, it's just hard to see. Other theories are that there's – Apparently two very good pubs in Postbridge. Ah. And perhaps some of the folks indulged in a little bit of too much adult beverages for jumping on their vehicles or in their vehicles or on their bikes. I hope that's not the case. I hope I hope so too. Especially dudes driving with two kids. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it could be the case for one of them. Doesn't mean all of them. Like I could it's see true. could I see the salesman going to celebrate? Yeah. Getting a drink. For sure. Sure. I don't I don't see the caravan. I don't see her being out. Maybe she was doing some other stuff. Yeah. But that's the skepticism. Those are the encounters and the theories. Let's talk about it in the discussion. Before we get to the discussion, we'd like to stop the episode and thank our newest patrons who, as of the recording of this podcast, are Jack Black, B, Esmeralda, Brandon, Laura, Alex, Laney, Carson, Alexandra, Ray Ray and Jeremy, Frank, Ailey, and Val. It's a bumping week. We appreciate all of you jumping on our Patreon and supporting the podcast. So this is normally when Charlie and I highlight something. And uh, to keep this timely, Charlie is uh, traveling on his way to Scotland right now. I think his his, uh, flight actually got delayed tonight, which sucks. But anyway, just to kind of remind you what kind of bonus content we're putting out there. We have quizzes. We have fun segments where our producer quizzes us on our own episodes to see how much we remember. We do social media responses. Every Monday we put out posts that ask questions. You respond to them. In that segment, we read your responses, shout you out, respond to them ourselves. We watch movies. We do Google Hangouts where we literally just get together and talk. Lots of bonus stuff. Uh, Ringtones are available there. We have wallpapers for your phone. I guess one thing I want to highlight, even though I kind of just said it, is I really love the Netflix watch parties. We use a teleparty Chrome extension so we can all chat during it. We put polls up so the patrons actually get to vote what movies we watch, which is a lot of fun. And uh, I just, I mean, I've said it before, horror movies is what brought me into horror. If it wasn't for the sci-fi channel, if it wasn't going to blockbuster family video and, and being allowed to rent horror movies and, and all the scary stuff like that's what and then that translated to horror games and now here I am uh, so I really love watching the horror movies with everyone and, and and making fun of some of the bad dialogue talking about the moments that really freak us out you know things that aren't meant to be funny and are I mean horror movies are not always the best films but uh, they're always a good time and with that said I also want to thank Bethany who is a patron and a listener probably if you follow us on social media you probably have seen this but she makes a special cocktail based around the winning movie for us to indulge in uh, if you're over 21 during the film and uh, they always look really good she sends out the recipes uh she knows her stuff 
And 95% of the time, they're good. Probably 100% of the time, they're good. But Charlie and I definitely like the sweeter things, I would say. Uh, so shout Bethany out. We appreciate all the help that you're doing with that. And, and it's cool to pair it with the movie. So that's that's what I want to highlight for our Patreon. I hope Charlie gets to Scotland sooner than later. But with that said, let's get back to the episode. All right. So there's there's a lot to talk about here. It's got some hairy hands. I think because there's so much similarities, I don't think we have to go like go encounter by encounter. Right. They are um, very similar. Did you have any thoughts about the the Reddit story? Because we we kind of jumped from that. Yeah, too. that was pretty good too. Uh, my, my biggest takeaway was that it reacted the same way as the authors when she prayed. Yes, in the caravan. Yeah, yeah. Theo in the caravan and Sally. Sally, Sally driving through. Both did a prayer. Yeah, and went away. She closed her eyes. Like, how crazy is that nonsense? I, I think at that point, like she was saying, like. She knew she couldn't overpower the hands. She was like, so Jesus can point? take the wheel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, I got me, I got the hairy hands, and Jesus. I wonder, just imagine, like, the. I think one of the, it's kind of like the, that one story we did forever ago where the person felt the hair on their knee. Remember oh, that? Yeah, yeah, their, yeah. Their leg was outside. It was a listener submission. It was a listener submission. That was a compilation. Yeah, okay, I don't remember. But I just remember their leg was outside their bed and they felt hair, someone else's hair on their knee. Yeah. That moment of realization, when she feels, I feel, it's like when you don't realize something, you're like your arm falls asleep or something. And she's like, she feels pressure on her head and she just assumes it's the headrest. And then there's that, like that sinking feeling in your stomach where you realize my head's not on the headrest. Yeah. Like this, this disembodied hand was putting just pressure on her head like yeah that realization is terrifying yeah it's very scary like i i do not that like out of that her entire reddit story that is the thing that jumps out to me it's like a it's, it's like a frog boiling in water slowly like you don't realize that's sad why are you saying that well it's, it's a thing people boil frogs no jesus i know they boil <laughs> it's lobsters an expression it's an expression i don't i don't know you know, you, well, it's good, it was the old science experiment. Like you put a frog in water and you turn it up slowly and it starts to boil and the frog doesn't notice. Oh. But that's what happened to Sally. It takes his, it takes his towel off and puts his arms <laughs> over there. Oh, <it's> nice. <laughs> that's what happened to Sally. <laughs> Sally got boiled like a frog. She Well, she did in a sense. Like she didn't realize yeah, it was just that subtle, this thing was subtlety. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The hands like, I'm about to have some frog legs tonight. <laughs> so, but that was my big takeaway. Not the biggest takeaway from the story, but there's always like these little moments that just like, oh, that get me. And that yeah. I'll remember, like, what am I going to remember from that story three months from now? It's probably going to be that. Is there anything you want to say or touch on about the caravan or do you want to dive into more of the what could it be and the theories? Let's talk about the theories because I feel like I talked about the caravan enough. Okay. Oh, I just know that one stuck out to you personally. It did. So, it's just the imagery so, of it. Yeah. It's creepy. It is. It, I, it's hard to shake the Adams family. Like I just watched some Wednesday earlier this year, like in mm-hmm. January. So it's like, I'm just seeing that thing in my head in that yeah. moment. Okay. So there's the idea that it's a physical thing that isn't quite vanishing, but it's, it's physically leaving, but it has to take up a mass. Like, you know what I mean? Like if it's physical, yeah, no. like this water, this tumbler, if it vanishes, it's somewhere else, but it's still there. You know yeah. what I mean? It's physically taking up space. Like how do these hands get in the car? Like, it can't be a physical thing. It can't be. No. So if we rule that out and it's not like a cryptid, it's not like a physical creature. It has to have some it's type of spirit. It's not Bigfoot, I don't no. think, phasing. Interdimensional Bigfoot, just his hands. <laughs> yeah, no, but what, just hands. What would be worse if you're driving and it's Bigfoot's hands or Bigfoot's feet? <laughs> Uh, worse? I don't know. Probably, the, probably the feet. You can see a big, big foot foot come <laughs> uh, in. That dude, say that a big, big, big foot foot. A big foot, a big, big foot foot. <laughs> big, big fit foot foot. No, I can't say that. Okay, so I, I'm. I liked the idea, and I think I'm okay. I'm okay cutting it. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think it's the rocks and the magnets. No and the magnetism. Now I think it could be just the area is dark and stuff that could be part but, of it like, i don't think it's all of them though no the and and do because you just said that i have to cope with the fact that i don't know if i can go unbelievable on this and that hurts my soul <laughs> i do like the idea of you what you said well, that, well, it wasn't your idea it. but it could be dr helby 
how Dr. Helby's ghost. Cause I could see there being a lot of regret there. Yeah. And I could also see being stuck in a loop. I don't like, I feel bad. Like it's not really out there that this isn't really a first encounter. Most people assume that this is the first time somebody has struggled with the hands for some reason. It just, because he died and couldn't tell a story. And I hate to say, I don't trust the, I mean, kids are unreliable narrators. Anyone is So you in a car accident. You know, yeah. you, you learn those things. People, you hear about them. Like people don't, people don't know unless they post it on Reddit. Then they know. Like for some reason, it just makes more sense to me. Like I, it's easier for me to believe that he became the legend than he was the first one. And and I don't know why. I, I felt that from the jump before I, before someone said that it could be his spirit that's doing it. And that just kind of like clicked for me. Yeah. And I like to give him the benefit. Maybe it's just because I want a happy ending. Not that nothing, nothing's happy about this. But I like to think it is the loop rather than him being vengeful. And like, I, hope I so. died here, so I want you to die here too. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like he was a decent guy, as far as we know, based on those like three paragraphs. I, yeah, I felt like a chill dude. I yeah, I, I yeah. He worked at a prison though, so he probably was putting up with a little bunch of shit. But uh, yeah, I don't know if if you had to if you had to go believable and then defend it, like you know your family's life was on the line. Yeah, money on. The ghost. I think that's what I put it on. More so than any like Faye or anything like that? Yes, I think so. I Because it seems to me it's some kind of recreation of how he died. Not doing it on purpose. Not trying to hurt anybody. I'm I'm willing to buy into that because that kind of fits the narrative of what we already believe with spirits and how they work. Yeah. But let's pretend. So like let's put that on. A, let's put that on hold for a second. Okay. Even if we believe that to be the truth, let's put that on hold for a second. And let's pretend that. Dr. Helby was the first victim. Okay. Where did these hands come from? Like what if if the, if the hands aren't him and yeah. he was a victim of the hands, what could these hands be? Okay. I would argue that because they are somewhat silly in nature and they're in a national forest, this is some kind of uh, elemental. Hey, listen, I can't – like th- this is so not grounded of a story in a, in a – an urban legend, I you could say you could say the spirit of Loch Ness monster, and I would have <laughs> nothing to say. Yeah, I would argue because it's an it's an elemental of the forest. Unless you said it was granite rocks and stuff, and that's well, that's dumb. <laughs> no way. No, I don't know. Yeah, seriously, I, that's what I would guess. I was just based on your passion and your experience. You not know, not experience based on what you enjoy the most about paranormal. I was really curious to to hear what you what you thought it might be because I have no idea. So mm-hmm. I was curious to see what you would say. So let me ask you, let me throw you under the bus. We're on, on our believability scale that we do at the end of every episode, which is believable, viable, skeptical, or unbelievable. Where do you place the hairy hands of Dartmoor as, on this scale? As silly as they are, I, I still think I go viable. I can't do it, man. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't go unbelievable because there's too much here. And if it really is the spirit of someone who died that way, yeah, it's – it, I feel like that's kind of how urban legends are. Someone died, and then they say their spirit, you know? Mm-hmm. Why couldn't it be this guy tragically died with his kids, but they lived? But he doesn't know. And he and now he haunts the, the road where he died. And because he lost control of the wheel, he makes you lose control. You know, like, that's, like, the thing you hear about at a campfire or something like that. Yeah. But there's, like, so many, like, there's too many encounters here who say the same exact thing. Yeah. And it's not like something you're proud of. Like, yeah, I saw an alien last night. And it's there's like, there's people that don't want to say that. You no. know, like I saw a UFO or, you know, I saw a ghost. But no, like this guy literally was like, please don't tell anyone until I'm dead. Yeah. And even then maybe don't, you know. Mm-hmm. Like who wants to be like, yeah, I saw these hairy the hands. hairy hands the, and they the grabbed dis- my car. Of the disembodied variety. Yeah. And they were very hairy. <laughs> and they shook my car. No one's like, saying that be- proud. No. This is too many people. To come out and say this. So I can't go unbelievable. I really want to say skeptical just because it sounds so I know you want to, but are you? Could it just be that the road's rough and, and okay, in in 120 years, I got five encounters and two of them, one's anonymous, one, the other one didn't have a real author and then one was Reddit. And so we got, I'm going to skeptical (laughs) and I'm going to sleep like a baby at night knowing that I went skeptical, but not unbelievable. So that is our episode on the hairy hands of Dartmoor. What a fun story that was. I've been telling you about this for like a week and a half. Just like I got a <laughs> silly story for you. I, it was silly. I thought it was going to be a much shorter episode, but that's okay. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I hope when you heard it, you thought it was crazy and ridiculous and you couldn't believe that you were going to listen to an episode about it. Yeah. And I hope there was at least, let's say two, I hope there was at least two moments during the episode where you forgot that it was kind of a silly idea. Yeah. And you legitimately got a little freaked out. Because there are a couple moments in there. You're oh, like, yeah. Ooh, that's not, that's not cool. And if that happened, then I consider that a big W. Going from silly, why am I listening to this? Maybe I'll listen to next week's episode. You should never do that. There's always a couple of gems here and there. But I also listen to podcasts, so I understand that that feeling. But I hope there was a couple of moments where you forgot the silliness of it and the the, the absolute bonkerness of it. And you had a moment where you're like, oh, that's creepy. Oh, so what's like a that. British word they would use? Um, outlandish. Is that right? I don't outlandish. know. Outlandish. Outlandish. I don't know. That, that might just be me. Maybe. I don't know. That's a fun story, though. They but say, bloody hell. <laughs> bloody hell. That was crazy. If you enjoy that story, like I enjoy this story, it would mean a lot to us if you went to Apple and left a review and five stars. And if you went to Spotify and left five stars. And what else, what else can you do on Spotify? Uh, it asks, what did you think of this episode? And it allows you to write what you thought of that episode. And you better believe, uh, if I remember, that I'm going to put a believability scale <laughs> on the hairy hands of Dartmoor. And I cannot wait to see what y'all think. And you know what? If For those of you that are still listening at this point in time, if you see that on there, we're on uh, Spotify, it says, what did you think of this episode? Feel free to say what you thought of this episode. But I'm also very curious to th- to hear what you think it might be. Because we're not sold. Like, we like certain theories. We like certain ideas. But I'm really curious to hear what you all think these hands might be, assuming that they're not fake. Yeah. And if you want to hear more from the podcast and you listen to all the episodes we got, if you go to Patreon, I bet there's some that you haven't heard. Because we got a whole back catalog. Whole back catalog. We watch movies. We hang out and talk to each other once a month. We do fun games, quizzes, unique bonus content segments, director's cuts. We listen to old episodes. Send out t-shirts if you're a dedicated tier. So much fun there. I'm going to talk about something we haven't talked about in a minute. Oh, yeah? If you like community, if you like talking to other people that like paranormal stuff, and you just want to, you know, t- talk to like-minded folks. I really recommend our Discord. Oh, yeah. It's popping in there. It is bumping in the Discord. I think it's like over 300 members. I We jump in from time to time. It's been a minute. We've been very studio-minded lately and focusing on that. But we pop in time to time. And, uh, I, you know, we can attest there's some really good people in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not all about the podcast. It turns into other stories and people's uh, what you're, you know, anything you would expect in the community that goes beyond just the podcast. Yeah, so for sure. What you're watching, what you're doing, things you're working on, sharing your creative works. It's 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 branched out to be bigger than the podcast, and I love that. Me too. So if you're interested in that, we do have a Discord. Go check that out. But with that said, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. A podcast as bizarre as you are. <laughs>